Apple Knocker Radio. Greetings, friends. I've been thinking a lot about the 1960s lately. Now, I've always been very interested in the history of the 1960s, but I've become particularly interested in it over the last couple of years because I see some really strange parallels between the 1960s and the era that we are living through. Um, right down, there are specific events that I... Um, have happened in the 1960s that connect to specific events that happened here. I mean, with details that are like mirror images of each other. It's so weird. It's like, it's like what we're experiencing now is like a bizarro version of the 1960s. It's it's strange. It's strange. And I have more ideas about that, but that's something I'll get into later. But today I've been thinking a lot about the 1960s and the Mothman, and the connection between the Mothman and the flower children of the hippie generation. Uh, I know this is a strange, strange uh, idea, but let's let's just go along for the ride, please. So, I assume anybody who follows this channel knows at least roughly about the Mothman story, right? But if not, the 19 from 1966 to 1967, there was a series of sightings of um, like a like a mothman although initially that wasn't the consensus name for it some people called it like a giant bird or like a bird man type thing which is basically this big like humanoid winged creature and there were all these sightings of this creature it happened for over the span of like a, a year i believe it was from like late 1966 until late 1967 and um and all of these events preceded the collapse of the Silver Bridge, which was a real historical event. The Silver Bridge collapsed um, in December of 1967, and um, a lot of people died. It was, a, it was a great tragedy. It was right around Christmas time. They fell into that icy water and died. Um, now, most people who know, most people who aren't really hardcore into this kind of thing, they know the general story of that. But what they don't know is that the the sightings of the Mothman were actually like almost insignificant compared to the broader just absolute strangeness that happened around it and that strangeness i actually think that the film um which i think was in the late 90s early 2000s the mothman prophecy starring richard Gere, i actually thought they did about as good a job as you could with a film in capturing that the strangeness of it but it still doesn't do the full strangeness of it justice like to really appreciate that you need to read the book by john keel um, which was not originally titled The Mothman Prophecies. It was like something from like it came from outer space or something like that. I don't know. But the versions that they sell now, they sell under The Mothman Prophecies. So you'll have no trouble finding it. But the people who are into the story, um, most people that I've talked to, and this didn't really, the full strangeness of this only just occurred to me over the last year, really. While The Mothman was happening on the East Coast in West Virginia, it was at the same time as the summer of love happening in San Francisco over in Los Angeles or over in uh, happening in San Francisco and California and out in Los Angeles and just the whole the whole state. Right. But it's that whole Southern California area. San Francisco was the real core of the summer of love. And, um, you know, the Monterey Pop Festival and all those things. And so. All right. That may just seem like, well, that's kind of a strange coincidence, but. And this kind of loops back into my previous video, um, Bob Dylan, Paranormal Trickster. I've just been looking at these times, and I've been thinking about um, the work of George Hansen uh, with his book, The Trickster and the Paranormal, uh, Jacques Vallée, the, um, the scientist who studies the UFO phenomenon, and, um, but also more traditional um, spiritual uh, ideas that you know this reality that we live in is this uh, massive just sea of consciousness and um that specifically that there are some kind of forces either baked into this reality or if you're like somebody who's into like simulation hypothesis you could say it was in the initial programming on the front end right it's like it's programmed into the nature of this reality um, or there are some people who believe it's actual organizations of enlightened people, human beings, um, who kind of um, shepherd human consciousness this way and that way. And um, the observation specifically that Valet has put forward is that you have like explosions of paranormal strangeness that occur. Um, he compares it to a thermometer in a room and... Um, they, they kind of it seems like kind of the purpose is to wake people's 
uh, to expand people's consciousness and make them realize that like we are not alone and that there's more to this reality than we think. <clears throat> but the people who then go searching for that, who then run with it, you know, the people who, who become like the UFO fanatics and all of those things, they, they tend to find that it doesn't lead anywhere, at least doesn't lead anywhere concrete, right? And so that's kind of like the great mystery. It's like these, you have these, these weird events, these strange events, these UFO flaps or just these explosions of consciousness, these things that happen. And uh, they seem to be like, like telling people. There's more to this reality than you realize. There's more to this reality than you realize. And it gets people going. The 1960s was just like this. You had a whole generation of these seekers who tuned in, turned on, and dropped out. And went out and um, said, I, like, I'm going to find this this thing, right? And uh, But the thing is, this thing tends to not lead anywhere. And it, it usually tends, I mean, like, a lot of, a huge portion of those people who um, dropped out in the 1960s, uh, suffered consequences for it later when the 1960s um zeitgeist died and uh and then they were no longer a cool hitchhiking hippie spiritual seeker they were just an unemployed person with a bad criminal history and a bad employment record right and um it actually turned out to be a great tragedy for a lot of people but um but anyway because I, I say a great tragedy for a lot of people, because I could easily see how I would have gotten caught up in that. I'm like, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, I want to want to hitchhike out to San Francisco and participate in this thing, man. Let's do it. But, um, so like I sympathize with those people. But, um, and obviously for some people it turned out well. I'm, I'm not, I, please let, let, let me speak. Please let me speak. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. So. When Kiel uh, researched this topic in with the Mothman, now Kiel came to similar later in his career. Um, I don't think by the time of the Mothman pro prophecies he had yet been having this idea, but I could be wrong. I feel like it was later in his career. But he came to a similar place as Valet and started to think of it as some kind of like overarching strange phenomenon that is uh, deeply embedded in the nature of consciousness, human consciousness, and the universe as a whole. This, this just this thing that we call reality. <clears throat> and that um, it was something less solid and kind of more profound than um, the way that people previously used to think of these topics. And so, um, again, that it's this this awakening of consciousness it's these forces reaching out and, and kind of tapping us on the shoulder and saying there's more out here but um the thing is now i, I read these people extensively but i'm not a scholar it, it's possible that they have actually overtly stated what i'm about to state and i just haven't seen it or picked up on it but with my reading of them, like most of them, Valet focuses mainly on the UFOs and then surrounding paranormal phenomenon. Keel was all about the high strangeness. Um, but I wonder, and then, you know, I talked to recently, I talked to Mark Stavish about the egregores concept and um, its possible influence on history. But I've, like, I've begun to th think that maybe when these these swelling upsurges of forces um, come into our consciousness and they create the the ufo flaps that valet has uh observed um the valet has observed that these ufo flaps like i said they, they happen at certain times and they seem to to happen at a time when they need to expand people's thinking right and but what if that phenomenon manifests itself in ways that are less like overtly bizarre what referring specifically to you know there's been recent work by a guy named uh, dave mcgowan and his he has observed the other and i actually i i i find mcgowan's book fascinating but i don't actually um fully go along with the whole psyop hypothesis that he puts out um but what he has observed is strange is that the the, what we came to what came to be known as the hippie generation of the 1960s um, arose um, out of Southern California for the most part um, but specifically out of Laurel Canyon this one little little aspect of Southern California this one little area was was this strange like just um, launch pad 
for all of these uh, musicians that ended up being so culturally impactful on on the world and ended up changing the youth consciousness in a, a new direction which they did you know um the 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 ripples of the 1960s are still being felt i mean the the whole whole generation was rerouted their whole consciousness was rerouted and um it was a profoundly transformational time and so just what i've been thinking is maybe it's not just a coincidence that the mothman and the hippie generation were happening at the same time right maybe they were all expressions of the same broader um paradigm shifting psychic event that was erupting around the entire world and that was um, manifesting in ways such as um, Robert Zimmerman becoming Bob Dylan and making all of that that music that um, that I love so much but um, but that was so impactful on people's minds and on people's imaginations and uh, you know Dylan himself has said that he felt like he was um, like he was channeling something he was possessed by something for that period of the 1960s and then all of a sudden it just stopped and died and he said from that time his he he is he doesn't have that inspired flow through him right <clears throat> but um i mean but it manifests in all kind of ways you know people look at these things and, and like referring back to the people who are more on the political conspiracy side i, I I th I feel like what happens is that we see these things that um, they look like they have to have been orchestrated, right? Because there's so many weird coincidences for how something grows. Like, that doesn't look organic. That looks like there was some kind of intelligence behind it. And I get that. But maybe the mistake is then assuming that it has to be some kind of um, just normal base human intelligences and then people you know automatically then start assuming it's got to be like the intelligence agencies and all of these things maybe that's not the right way to look at it maybe the right way to look at it is that um in in the code around us in this i really like simulation hypothesis because it allows you to visualize things uh, about um reality in the strange reality a lot of like the older um, spiritual ideas to me it's a very useful tool to um, envision them and so whether or not it's literally true I really like to use simulation hypothesis because it makes it easier to draw these analogies and things like that but imagine like if you know the code was changed right so imagine if we are living the simulation again this is a good mental model I'm not saying I fully endorse that idea. I, I actually, no, well, just whatever. It's very useful. So we're living in this, there's all around us, there's these binary films, just like, you know, you've seen the movie The Matrix, all these data flying around us. And um, whoever's at the gears, or if it is, um, if it is controlled by the, the ascended masters, or the, they've come by various names, this is supposed to be this core group of people that are, um, these mystically enlightened people to the point they they are they are so on top of reality that they can actually manipulate reality themselves and that they're the ones who kind of shepherd and guide human consciousness through this through time as we go I think that's one idea that i find endlessly intriguing but whatever it is like the code has been changed right and the code comes through and says that this is where we're pushing things we we need to push things in this direction and that code just kind of starts to manifest in in various different ways. And so in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, it manifests as the Mothman. In the um, Summer of Love, San Francisco, Haight-Ashbury, it manifests as inspired music. Um, that inspired music and cultural transformations that um, the two of them, the Mothman and the Summer of Love, they end up having the similar effect of shaking up people's consciousness, expanding their consciousness, but not in any particular direction, right? Um, that's why a lot of people, they get caught up in these things, and then they end up feeling like they got um, bamboozled because it seems to be pointing somewhere, but then it doesn't point anywhere. And, but anyway, I, I'm going off on a tangent here. But um, just that core idea the question I'm asking, the thing that I'm thinking about, the thought experiment that I'm running through, is what if the Mothman in the Summer of Love and all the stuff that happened around the world 
the 1960s, it's, it was not only transformational here in the United States. There were things that happened around the entire globe. Um, but it was centered here in the United States in, in terms of, of the cultural effect in, or the cultural influence. But my point is, what if it was not coincidental that they happened at the same time? What if they were both manifestations of the same underlying phenomenon or the same underlying um, uh, energetic shift that's trying to push us in another direction? Right? It's. I think it's it's fascinating. It's a it's a great piece of brain candy. I think it's just really something fascinating to mull over, and um, and especially because if it's true, I swear the same thing's been happening over the last few years. I mean, um, I got some ideas about Conor McGregor and, and all of these things um, that seem disconnected, but I'm not actually sure they are disconnected. I actually think they may be manifestations of the the broader underlying code the shift the the shifting paradigm um that is happening at a like a fundamental uh level <clears throat> um in that it just manifests in different ways and so i don't know it's a strange idea but it's one i'm going to um continue playing with um well, hopefully, I mean, hopefully, if if it's a stupid idea, it's, tell me it's a stupid idea. So, uh, um, but uh, if you think it's a good idea, also let me know that so I can explore it further. Because I've got a lot of interesting thought experiments that have come out of starting with that baseline assumption. So, yeah, uh, it's interesting stuff. It's fun stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it. Peace out, everybody. I hope you're having great 2022s. And uh, I hope you are living with some passion and some love and going after your goals and feeling good because no matter what the creepy guys got lined up for us in the future you can't crush the human spirit we're gonna win and the future's gonna be good all right peace out